Hello and thank you for joining us on another edition of Kaleidoscope on Channels Television. I'm Anne Mwawadu. On the program today, the Managing Director and CEO of Nimeth International Pharmaceuticals PLC, Matthew Azoji, discusses the organization's activities and the positive impact it is making in developing the society. Once again, welcome to Kaleidoscope. Nemeth International Pharmaceuticals PLC is one of the leading pharmaceutical companies right here in Nigeria. But let's find out how the organization began its operations in the country. Nemeth International Pharmaceuticals PLC, formerly known as Pfizer Product PLC, was established in 1957. It is the resultant company from the successful management buyout of the 60% equity holdings Pfizer Incorporated New York, USA. The management buyout took place in May 1997, when Pfizer Incorporated in pursuit of its global repositioning strategy divested its equity in Pfizer Products PLC. Prior to the name change, Pfizer had operated in Nigeria for 40 years, manufacturing, marketing and distributing Pfizer brands of pharmaceutical and veterinary products in tablets, capsules, ointments, cream, powder, injectable and oral liquid forms. During the 40-year period, the company established the first pharmaceutical manufacturing plant in Abia State, Nigeria. It then set up and opened what was then the most modern pharmaceutical plant in the West African sub-region in 1976 at Oregon, Lagos. Since then, Nemeth International Pharmaceuticals PLC has continued to produce several leading pharmaceutical brands in Nigeria and across Africa. These represent great milestones for a company that started as a trading venture in 1957 at a location in Ibutemeta, Lagos. With footprints in the Anglophone West African countries of Ghana, Sierra Leone, Liberia and the Gambia, Nemeth has the vision to be the leading innovative healthcare provider out of Africa. The Managing Director and CEO of Nemeth International Pharmaceuticals PLC, Matthew Azoji, reveals more. Take a look. Before you acquired the brand name Nemeth International, you had operated in Nigeria for 40 years with great milestones like building the first manufacturing company in Nigeria. Tell us about those early years. Yes, you are correct. Uh, Nemeth International Pharmaceutical PLC is an offshoot of an American pharmaceutical giant, Pfizer Incorporated US, uh, New York, USA. Um, this company had, um, it, it operated in Nigeria as Pfizer Products PLC for 40 years before the management buyout that occurred in 1997. Now, the company was involved in manufacturing, marketing and distribution of pharmaceuticals and uh, veterinary products, both in terms of tablets, capsules, injections, oral liquid preparations, and other preparations. It also had veterinary products at that time. Uh, as you pointed out, the company that would become Nimeth will establish the first pharmaceutical plant in Aba, in the present Adia state, southeast of Nigeria. Now, unfortunately, this plant was destroyed during the Nigerian Civil War. But undeterred and undaunted, Pfizer then built another plant, what was the most modern pharmaceutical plant, presently in Orego, in Lagos. Now, the ma management buyout th that occurred, now occurred in 1997, that involved the buying of the 60% equity of Pfizer Incorporated. And that management buyout was led by Mazi Sam Uhaboma who is currently the president of Matsuko Society of Nigeria and also a non-executive director of Nimet International Matsuko PLC. Now, this company, Nimet, the name came because it was named after a man called Robert Nimet, who was actually the father director overseeing Nigeria. He loved the Nigeria operation so much that the management then felt that it was good to honor him by naming this company after him. Uh, he is late today, 
But Nimet is so grateful to him for the role he played in the formation of this company. Today, Nimet is focusing on the production of family medicines and um, is a trusted name in family medicines. We are still doing our veterinary business as well as personal care products. And we continue to focus in building and selling these products and distributing them in Nigeria and West Africa. And our plan is to ensure that Nimet gets into the rest of Africa. Even as the uh, African Continental um, Free Trade Agreement has been signed by Nigeria, and the F Nigerian government is encouraging Nigerian companies to go to the rest of Africa, Nimet is preparing to take advantage of this situation. As a trusted name in family medicines, uh, Nimet has one of the most outstanding products that are adding value to the family. For instance, uh, uh, warm infestation is a major challenge for growing children and for families. And Nimet has one of the best brands in terms of uh, warm uh, deworming, and that is Pyrantrin, um, warm expeller, that uh, is very well known in Nigeria and being used by many people for the deworming exercise. We also have NCP antiseptic, which is uh, also helping the family in terms of personal hygiene and taking care of uh, the current uh, situation of uh, COVID-19. And of course, we have added other products in that line. That is the NCP sanitizer and the NCP disinfectant spray. Uh, you can, as an executive, lay hands on, on our huntamine, which helps to fight stress, you know, for uh, the average executive and the uh, you know, average busy lady or busy man. According to you, community service is one of your core values. Take, for example, health initiatives. You have several of them. Tell us how you target those projects and what you actually do in the health sector and, of course, other sectors. Corporate social responsibility, or what I may call sustainability project for communities where we do business, is one of the core values of NIMET. We actually termed it community. The other core values of NIMET include customer delight, uh, leadership, innovation, integrity, teamwork, and God consciousness. We recognize the grace of God as part of the success of NIMET. And that's why God consciousness is there. And we believe that the only way to sustain the business is to ensure that we grow along with the society in which we operate. And this is done by giving back to the society through projects that profit members of society or enhance environmental development. So that's, uh, we are guided by the understanding that businesses will grow when the society in which they operate grow in all positive ramifications. This, is, this understanding has guided our social giving. And as you rightly pointed out, much of what we do also is tailored in the health sector. You must have heard about what we call FIDGA. Mm -hmm. Fight the good fight against hypertension. That is one of the programs of NIMET to enable people to identify hypertension early and to treat it. So NIMET sponsors getting people to get free uh, hypertension check, blood pressure checks, and also sugar tests and also enables people to identify this hypertension and treat them early. One of the greatest problems about hypertension is that it's regarded as a silent killer. Because many people who have hypertension may not know unless they go to hospital. You see that some people go into a crisis. Suddenly somebody sees their blood pressure goes to 200, over 90 or over 100, and then you find out that this person can just collapse and die. So NIMED is focusing on this. And on May 17th, which is regarded as World Hypertension Day, NIMED sponsored currently a, an online program. We are in, the experts in cardiology were brought together to speak about great awareness about hypertension and blood pressure increase and how to treat them. And this helps to build up that aspect. NIMED did not stop here. Apart from creating awareness about COVID-19, we also have donated antiseptics and uh, sanitizers to many uh, institutions in, in Nigeria, including the Lagos Ministry of Health. In addition to that, we have also uh, 
collaborated with Federal Road Safety Corps by sponsoring the preparation of uh, what I call it uh, awareness kiosks. We launched that kiosk in collaboration at motor parks and uh, various centers in Lagos under the auspices of Federal Road Safety Corps. Through that process, they create awareness to travelers and users of uh, motor parks to ensure that they comply with all those COVID-19 protocols. You focus on research into medicaments and drugs that help tackle and treat ailments and diseases, especially in Africa. How much progress have you made in that regard? Innovation, as I mentioned earlier, is one of our core values. And our innovation is not just looking at uh, making a directionless um, quest for uh, the new, but rather we research, we, our research and development are heavily targeted on challenges that are facing Nigeria and Africa. Nimet is one of those companies in this country that is focused on developing quality medicine for Nigeria and Africa, particularly on those areas that are not where the multinationals are not paying so much attention. And with our new vision to be the leading innovative healthcare provider out of Africa, Nimet is reinvigorating her effort to ensure that we improve on our past achievements and make new effort in this area. You know, so uh, in the recent past, we have committed substantial funds in our R&D effort. And our R&D is directed in two areas. We have what we call internal R&D and external R&D. In our internal R&D, we focus on formulation and reformulation of our products. Some of the products also that we are originally Pfizer, our, our parent uh, company, reformulating them to make them uh, better suit our own market and to create more value and reduce side effects and improve the products. One, some of the ones we have done in this area is reformulation of the product called Minizide for hypertension for blacks. Hypertension that is basically in blacks to what we now have is Mini Plus. We reformulated that. The other product we have also introduced in this area is what we call Nordwet, which helps to improve the efficacy and, uh, of the product and also reduce uh, side effects. In our external uh, R&D, we collaborate with uh, medical and pharmaceutical researchers and uh, scientists, and we focus on what they have achieved, the output of their work, and we look at opportunities for collaboration to bring these things to market. Now we have done this, one of the earliest outcome of this particular research is a product called Ciclavit. Ciclavit is the outcome of a research done by late Professor G.I. Ekeke of the University of Port Harcourt, who used a local seed called Kajanus Kajan and showed that it has effect to correct uh, sickle cell disorder and reduce the, all the challenges that patients in that, pro, in that area are having. And Nime took up this uh, uh, research and developed it into this product. Sickle cell uh, disorder, as you know, is one of those challenges that are very much more in Africa and in Nigeria in particular. Um, more than 50% um, of the patients are in the African, Sub-Saharan sub -Saharan Africa. And it has a way of, um, uh, you know, making the patients not to live. The quality of life is highly affected, and many of those patients die young. But this cyclavis is helping to improve their uh, condition. More than three percent of the Nigerian population, over two hundred million, are affected by sickle cell disorder. That means over six million Nigerians are living with sickle cell disorder. So this particular uh, medicine, Ciclavit, has been of immense um, help to, this part, to, to such patients in order to reduce both childhood and adult morbidity and mortality. We'll continue the discussion when we return in just a moment. Please stay with us. Welcome back. You're still watching Kaleidoscope on Channels Television. 
The managing director and CEO of Nimes International Pharmaceuticals PLC, Matthew Azoji, tells us more about Nimes' contribution to the pharmaceutical sector in Nigeria. And what can you say about the pharmaceutical industry in Nigeria and how have government policies been affecting operations in that sector? The industry relies heavily on importation, which uh, has been identified for many years, and the government and the people of Nigeria have been trying to deal with it. And there are three levels of our dependence on importation. Firstly, there is over dependence in importation of finished pharmaceutical products or finished medicines. There is also over 90% dependence of the industry on importation of raw materials, both active pharmaceutical ingredients and excipients. Excipients is the things you use to work together with the active product to make sure that you produce it as a tablet or injection or whatever. Now, there's also a dependence on research outcomes. You know, in Africa, of which Nigeria is one, uh, there's no, uh, the level of primary research to develop new medicines is low. The first national drug policy in 1990, which was building on the, on the first uh, health policy of 1988, had a target. The target was that by the year 2000, Nigeria would have been at least 70%, able to produce 70% of its uh, medicines, its medicines required. However, in the year 2000, that target was not achieved. So when there was the revised or second national drug policy was going to be rolled out in 2003, that target was also put there. But it was a bit modified, and I will quote, in, the target was to increase local production capacity to a level we are 70% of total output satisfies at least 60% of national drug requirements of essential medicines, while the rest of it will be exported by 2008. So Nigeria was looking at by the year 2008, not only that we will be meeting at least 60% of our local requirements, we will be exporting part of our own local medicines to other parts of the world. However, to nearly 21 years after, when the first target was set, or 13 years when it was revised, the, that 70% is still more on the negative side, in the sense that today we are still importing up to 70% of our med medicine requirements. About, only about 30 to 40% are made in Nigeria. This leaves the supply of healthcare commodities, which are essential in the hands of foreigners. And you will agree with me that that portends a huge you know, health security danger for Nigeria. You will understand that even during this COVID-19, Nigeria doesn't have any vaccine manufacturing facility. The other aspect you want to look at is even though the Nigerian pharmaceutical manufacturing companies is still supplying about 30 percent, 30 to 40 percent of our drug requirement, many Nigerian manufacturers are just using only about 40% of their installed capacity. So capacity utilization is still poor because of competition from importation. The macroeconomic environment in Nigeria and uh, the fact that infrastructure development is weak has made it in such a way that cost of production is very, cost of local production is high. And therefore, it makes competition you know, affect the local manufacturers in a negative way. So this explains why the pharmaceutical manufacturers group of Manufacturers Association of Nigeria have been making effort to link up with the government to get more uh, support to contribute more to this uh, space. And the uh, PMG man had earlier made uh, representation to the government of Nigeria, seeking for about 300 billion naira support to rebuild the industry. We want to uh, say that the government is showing sensitivity to that. During the COVID-19, you, you, you must be aware that, that uh, the Central Bank of Nigeria came up with the 100 billion naira facility, which was made available to members of the industry to rebuild their facilities to improve their facilities. 
So that's part of the sensitivity we can observe that the government is showing. But the, 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 the industry is still asking for more in many areas that the government can do more. The second level of local pharmaceutical manufacturing, where we need raw materials, importation of raw materials. There are two things that can be done there. Number one is development of the petrochemical industry. This has been said over and over again. You know, you know, this petroleum that we export, which Nigeria is endowed, very well endowed, the crude oil, has a lot of chemicals that can be used to synthesize medicines. Can also be used in production of fertilizer. Can also be used in production of plastics and many other products. And that's what is called cracking of the petroleum. If you crack the petroleum, you break down and bring out all of these chemicals. And it's done through a major industry establishing the cracking columns and all of that. Now, that industry promises a lot for Nigeria. And one of the potential beneficiaries of this industry is the pharmaceutical industry. We are in, if we're able to do that, we can synthesize most of the medicines locally. I mean, the active pharmaceutical ingredients and even the uh, excipients. However, it's a, it's a, a capital-intensive project. If, the government, if we believe in it as Nigerians, I believe we can work to establish it because it promises a lot. Number one, it will provide all of these chemicals. We will be able to make our medicines locally. Number two, it will create who, millions of jobs. Uh, number four, it will reduce the, 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 the medicine security danger that we are facing. So we, importation will reduce and it will help us. And even in the agricultural sector, the agricultural sector also we can develop and focus on those agricultural products that have potential to provide medical uh, related uh, chemicals. For instance, in the area of excipients, we still import what, uh, what they call pharmaceutical grade starch. You know, these tablets you take, there is what they call starch inside, the starch inside. And pharmaceutical grade starch is made from maize, rice, and there is now a talk that we can also get that from cassava. Nigeria is well endowed in this, uh, all these agricultural products. If you look at the maize, Nigeria is the largest producer of maize in Africa, producing about 33 million tons. And we are still importing from a school based starch. So we desire that this starch can be developed from maize and rice, which Nigeria also is now growing to increase the production of rice. Now in the area of um, R&D, primary R&D to develop medicines, collaboration, um, that also is an area that the CBN recently approved some grants for universities and uh, some companies, they are working on that. There was a, a grant announced during the COVID-19. But there could also be collaboration between the university, like what NIMET is doing. We, 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 we working with the universities to develop products. More companies can do that. There could also be intercompany collaboration, collaboration between companies, where you bring your, your expertise, which might be varied, bring them together to develop products. So I believe if all stakeholders work together, the government, the industry, universities and research centers, working together collaboratively, we can improve our health security situation in our country. How bright is the future looking for NEMES? Talking about the future, you are talking about vision. Yes. Now, vision is a key driver of strategy. And uh, since I joined the leadership of NIMET about two years ago, the board has approved a five-year strategic plan for the company. And uh, the vision of the company changed to what it is today, to be the innovative healthcare provider out of Africa. And our mission is to promote healthy, confident living. So by that vision, we are a healthcare company. We are not just a pharmaceutical company. We are now a healthcare company. So we are broader business. This year, we are able to pay dividends to shareholders. I mean, already we have, have a flattened curve, and uh, we are in the direction of expansion. This year, we are able to pay dividends to shareholders for the first time in over 10 years, in nearly 10 years. And um, at a recent annual general meeting, 
the shareholders approved the board's recommendation to carry out a two-layered um, expansion for the company. One is the upgrade of our current Oregu plant, a major upgrade going on, and then the other is to build a new factory in Anambra State, which will comply with WHO World Health Organization current standards of good manufacturing practice. The two projects are going on now. Work is going on, on seriously on, both, on, on the two projects. And we expect that this will be the major driver of our growth. We will um, encourage designing investors that this is the time to put their money in Nimet because they are going to reap good results. The fact that we are upgrading our factory and building a new factory, we are creating more jobs for Nigerians. And then of, uh, we are also going to expand all our social responsibility effort. We are going to expand that. In all the communities that we work, we will be doing more for them. And uh, as we are building more factories in other parts of Nigeria, uh, it means that that social responsibility, corporate social responsibility, will be expanding it beyond where they are located now to different other communities. And this is where we draw the curtains on today's edition of Kaleidoscope on Channels Television. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget, if you missed this or you want to watch previous editions, go to youtube.com forward slash channels web, click on playlist and then scroll to Kaleidoscope. Thanks a lot for watching. I'll see you again soon. Stay safe. I'm Anne Wawadu. Thank you.